So here's our pizza. I enter it into a diet app and I use my net diary. Now it's important to configure your diet app to not log carb to Apple Health because you don't want it to go directly into loop that way. But you do want it to save the protein and fat. You can see that this is 66 grams of fat, 144 carbohydrate, and 48 protein. Now if I start the shortcut, I could enter in the 144 grams of carb, and you have to do this part manually. But for the fat, it loads from Apple Health what the nutrition app saved there. So I can just click on the 66. And if I had entered several foods in, I can click on several of these, and the shortcut will add them together. And here's the protein, so 48. And then it runs, and it says it's going to do an immediate entry of 144 grams of carb, and then a square wave for the equivalent of 78.6 grams of carb over 9.86 hours. I've had type 1 diabetes for 30 years, and things really changed when I went to a closed loop system. I started using Open APS and Loop, and my A1C before that was 8.7. After looping, I went to a 6.0. Now that's not as good as being in the fives, but I did it without eating low carb. I actually averaged 240 grams of carb per day. That's fully normal carb eating. And when I ate high fat meals, I still found that I spiked hours later, like five or six hours later, I would go very high. I would go into the 300s or even 400s if I ate pizza or fettuccine Alfredo. But then I stumbled upon some research who found that fat didn't just delay carbohydrate absorption, but it actually required more insulin. So I started following this method and it's what helped me get into that lower range and still eat high fat, high carb meals. The problem was this was really complex to do by hand, so I wanted a way to automate it. My friend and I wrote an Apple shortcut that allows you to use an iPhone. You enter in your carbohydrates, you enter in your fat and protein, and then it automatically generates equivalent carbohydrates that allow the loop program deal with this extra insulin that you need over time. So now we're gonna test it out, not with one, not with two, but with three pepperoni pizzas. Taking a look at Night Scout five hours later, you can see that the highest it went was 126. It had a uh, dip down to 78. And if you look to the left, you can see the 144 gram of initial carb entry. And then at 15 minute intervals, there's one gram of equivalent carb entries that represent the square wave. Here we are at 11 hours later, and you can see that there was uh, quite a spike that started about five hours into it and it did go up to 188, which is higher than I would ideally like. But if I wasn't using this 10 extra units of insulin that was provided by this square wave, I would probably be at three or 400 by now. So uh, this is really amazing actually, because that is more pizza than I would normally eat. And I only briefly peaked for 188. So overall, I think this is a great addition and I can't go back to not using it.